we're going to start with a disassembly. I'm going to remove the side panel of the dash. I'm going to remove two Phillips screws under the side panel. I'm going to remove one Phillips screw from this location on the bottom of the dash. One Phillips screw from this location. At this point, we're going to remove the dash. We're going to have to pull out here to get over the little detents. We're going to apply outward pressure. We wiggle a little bit to get the clips to release. If they don't come off, you can use your plastic tool and pry a little bit on the top. Clips can be stubborn. So I'll leave that in the video just to show you. They don't just fall off in your hands. Sometimes you got to wiggle them around. We're going to unplug any switches on the dash. Now there's release clips. You push them in and remove the plugs. We're going to remove the diagnostic plug from its bracket by pushing in on the ears on the side while pushing back on the plug. We're going to remove the three screws holding the steering column cover plastic on. There's one screw located right here, and there's one on each side of the front. You would have to turn the steering wheel to access them. I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom. I'm going to turn the wheel, exposing a screw right here on the face. The screw on the face is located right here. We're going to pull that screw out, then we're going to turn the wheel to the opposite side and remove the other screw. I'm going to go ahead and remove the first screw. And we're going to turn the wheel to the other side. Do we unlock it? To remove the second screw. With both screws out, we're going to recenter the wheel. Now, we're going to remove the steering column cover plastic. I'm going to pull the 10 millimeter bolts from this uh, knee protector pad. Just this is here so your legs don't go under the dash in the event of an accident. We're going to remove the steering column cover plastic. So on the sides, I like to put pressure with my thumb on the seam uh, to pop the sides. So you're looking at the seam, put your thumb in there, push pressure on, and you'll pop the seam here. You'll pop it all the way up to the front. And you're going to repeat this on the other side. After you've released the sides, we're going to put the key in. Turn to the on position so we can unlock the steering wheel. Then we're going to turn the wheel so we have access to the first screw hole. So if you look in the top of the screw hole, there's a little groove. I'm going to put my pick tool in the groove, and I'm going to pull down a little bit to create a gap. It's going to push a little lock clip back uh, so I can separate the steering column cover plastic. So I'm going to pull down on the, the pick tool, create the gap, and then I will be able to pop the cover down. We're going to turn the wheel to the opposite side, and we're going to repeat the procedure. We're going to pry out with the pick tool while we lift up or pull down on the bottom.
we can separate the steering column cover plastic. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the ignition plug of the vehicle. I'm going to press the release clip and unplug the plug. We're going to plug our T-harness plug into the ignition switch plug. And then we're going to plug the plug we removed from the ignition switch into our T-harness. We have a secondary harness with a ground wire. We're going to locate our ground wire and we're going to attach our ground. We're going to temporarily use one of the screws that held on the uh, knee protection panel here. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to ground the ground right here. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna remove this when we reassemble the vehicle and put it right back where it was. So we're up underneath the dash. We're at looking at the brake pedal. This is the brake light activation switch. We're gonna unplug the harness that runs to the brake light activation switch. The clip is facing me. I'm going to press the clip and unplug the plug. So we're looking at the plug that goes to the brake light switch from the back with the clip facing downward. We want to make our connection on this white wire in the bottom corner pin right here. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to isolate the wire. I'm just going to take this loom, I'm going to push it back. That should give us enough room to make our connection. You can cut it and remove it if you want, but I'm just going to push it back. This is our brake wire connection right here. So there's two white wires. So make sure you're at the pin location right here. Clip down. It's the white wire right here. Corner pin. To make our connection for the brake signal, we're going to use what's called a posi tap connector. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew the posi tap connector that came with your kit. You're going to have two pieces. You're going to have a piece with a groove, piece with a needle. We're going to put the groove over the wire. We're going to keep it back a little bit off of the plug. And then we're going to screw the tap back together, making sure we don't cross thread it. And we don't have to cr crank it real tight, just crank it down until it stops. We don't want to smush the wire. The wire smushes, it's too tight. Now to, to put our incoming wire into the tap, we want to loosen the collar of the tap. There's another piece on the end. We want to loosen it about a turn and a half. Now we'll have an incoming wire that we want to connect to this tap and we want to strip about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And we're going to take the stripped wire, we're going to put it into the collar It'll bottom out, and then we want to push it in until it goes in all the way. At this point, we hold it in and we tighten the collar. Now we give it a pull test. I'm pulling on it pretty good, so it's in there and it, and it bit. If it comes right out, it didn't bite right and you didn't make a good connection. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this switch back in. Okay, the second connection we're looking for is a connection that's going to give us a positive signal when the doors are locked with the OEM remote. And this is going to activate our remote starter. So we're going to want to have a grounded test light for this connection. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look in this harness right here that comes through the door jam. So it's here and it's going into this hole right here. It's a little bit of, of uh, harness, extra harness in here. You could pull it out a little bit if you need to, to get a little bit of working room. So now we're going to cut the tape right here. Um, I've already cut the tape. We're going to look through the wires. We're looking for a gray wire. You know, on my vehicle, I only have one gray wire in the harness. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to isolate that gray wire with my pick tool. So you don't want to pull too hard, but you can give it a little bit to get it out. And we're going to make a connection here 
at this gray wire again we're going to use a posi tap connector so we're going to we're going to take our posi tap and we're going to do the same thing we did on the brake going to unscrew it you're going to put the tap over the the groove from the tap over the wire and we're going to screw it back together now with your kit you have a trigger relay assembly this relay is going to change the positive pulse on this wire to a negative pulse so the remote starter can recognize it and trigger remote start. You're going to have two plugs and a red wire. You're going to want to strip eighth to a quarter off of the red wire. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert this wire into the posi tap connector into the collar after we loosen it. So so we're going to loosen the collar about a turn and a half and put the red wire in push it in bottoms out push it in deeper tighten the collar give it a pull test so we're going to go ahead and we're going to test our remote starter we're going to lock the doors three times Okay, now the engine started. Um, the keyless entry will not function while the engine's running. So this means when you walk up to the vehicle, you're going to put the key in the door lock and turn it the old-fashioned way, and you're going to get in that way. But, you know, at least you have a warm car. We're going to press and hold the brake pedal and shut the engine off. This will confirm our brake connection is correct and functioning. We're going to move on to adding parking lights to our system. So if you want to add the parking lights so you have a visual indication the vehicle is running, there's two connections you got to hit up on this plug. I'm going to give you a closer look. You're going to have to hit a parking light um, activation wire and you're going to have to hit a constant power wire to feed the parking light relay of the unit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you where to make the two connections if you want to add parking lights. So we're looking at the back of the fuse box and we want this red wire with a black stripe right here. It's located on this plug. That's a constant power wire. We're going to connect our red wire with a black stripe here. So we're looking up under the dash at the fuse box or BCM assembly and we're going to want to make our parking light connection it's kind of hard to get this tablet under here right here there's a pink wire I'm going to show you how to test both wires so that's our parking light activation trigger pink wire located right here okay so I'm going to show you the test procedure and you really should not do this optically you should test it with a test light okay so we have our test light a lot of people ask me about this light it's called the handy hooker so if you're interested in getting one of these Google handy hooker <laughs> you never know what's gonna come back if you do that but <laughs> that's what this lights called. so we're gonna test the uh, red wire with a black stripe first so this should light up no matter what the position of the key or the ignition or anything. This is a constant power wire. Okay, so you see that's lit up. You can see it there. Okay, so that's lit. Now, we're gonna go over to the pink wire right here. Uh, you know, the color can be a little off. They fade a little bit. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probe the pink wire. If you don't have the handy hooker, you can get in there and, and push it in the terminal. So now I want to turn the parking lights on. So you see the light going on and off in my hand. We're going to use our posi tap connectors to make our connection. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew the posi tap just like the other posi tabs that we used. So this will be like our third posi tap. So if you want to cut some tape so you have more working room, on the parking light wire, that's fine. 
but we'll put the posi tap groove over the wire and we'll screw the tap back together. Okay, there's our tap for our parking light input, it's called. That gives a positive signal to our unit. And then when the parking lights activate, the positive signal from here is placed on this wire right here. So if I had, if I wanted to eliminate that connection, I, I would have to make this harness one piece and I don't want to do that. So this is the way we're going to do it. Okay, so there's our other posi tap on our pink wire. Loosen both collars. Uh, uh, turn, turn and a half. And again, red with black to the red with black wire. It worked out perfect here. So we're going to insert that in. And we're going to tighten the collar. Now we're going to take the white wire. This is our parking light activation trigger. It's a positive trigger. So we're going to go ahead... And we're going to pull that uh, piece off, leaving the wire stripped an eighth to a quarter. We're going to push it in a tap. You're going to tighten the collar. You're going to give them both a pull test. We're ready to go outside, test activate, and uh, I'll let you see what it looks like from the outside. Okay, so we're outside of the vehicle. I'm going to lock the doors three times. This is going to trigger remote starting. This vehicle will run for 20 minutes. Now, the remote doesn't function while the engine's running. To make this vehicle lock and unlock, it's kind of an ordeal. So I'm not going to support that. This is all I'm going to support for this year group installation on the Hyundai Elantra. So... You know, uh, if you want to add locks and all that, buy somebody else's system. So you walk up to the vehicle, and you get in the old-fashioned way. But the good thing about this is, if you have power locks, they have like slave actuators. So when you turn this, the passenger door will actually unlock too. So turn it two times. And there's all my doors unlocked. You know, if you have somebody getting in the other side of the back doors, you're all set. But this remote will not work while the engine's running. So you can't shut the car off once you've initiated remote start. It's going to go for the 20 minutes, and then it'll shut itself off. If you want to turn it off early, you have to go into the vehicle, press the brake pedal. Here's a picture of the schematic if you want to do the whole job on this vehicle um, with an Evo 1. This is why I'm not going to... Uh, support anything other than what I've come up with for this vehicle.